Remember Sally? Last time we saw her, she was on a school excursion to the Garden of Babylon in Eukaryotopia, a large country bordering the Mediterranean Sea. She had a wonderful time exploring the city and ate lots of fresh, organic produce. But it's time for Sally to bid farewell and jump on a flight to her next destination, Zoo York. Zoo York is a bustling metropolitan city that is the capital of Eukaryotopia. They are known for their affordable hot dog street vendors and gourmet Zoo York strip steak. Before we continue, let's revise over some important definitions. If you recall, living organisms can be classified under three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. Eukaryota, or eukaryotes, can be classified into four kingdoms, including protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Eukaryotes are found in various environments and can sexually reproduce. So far, we have explored the structure and function of plant cell components. If you would like to revise this, please see our earlier videos on plant cells. Just a heads up, as you watch our videos on animal cells, you'll probably spot some cell components that are also found in plant cells. In fact, the structure and function of these cell components are often similar. We'll discuss this in our upcoming video on comparing plant and animal cells. Over the next three lessons, we will introduce individual animal cell components and their specific functions. In the HSC Biology course, you will study the function of each component in relation to its structure. This lesson will cover the cell membrane, which separates organelles from the external environment. We will also study an organelle involved in the storage of genetic material, the nucleus. In the second lesson, we will focus on organelles responsible for synthesizing and processing biological molecules, including the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, and lysosomes. In the third lesson, we will look at an organelle involved in energy transformation, specifically the mitochondrion. We'll also cover cell components responsible for structure, including the cytoskeleton and centrosome. If you recall, eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular. In general, eukaryotic cells, such as animal cells, are larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. Interestingly, the size and shape of an animal cell can vary dramatically based on the organism it belongs to and its distinct function. For example, a human red blood cell has a diameter of approximately 8 micrometers. Remember, one micrometer is equal to one thousandth of a millimeter, or one millionth of a meter. Meanwhile, a human ovum, which is an egg cell in the female body, averages 120 micrometers in diameter. And surprise, surprise, a nerve cell in a giraffe's neck can grow up to three meters in length. Of course, animal cells do not typically grow to this length. A typical animal cell has an average size ranging from 10 to 30 micrometers in diameter. Generally speaking, animal cells contain a membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. Remember, an organelle is an organized, specialized structure that is found in a eukaryotic cell. You could even say that these organelles are what make eukaryotes so complex. Each organelle has its own function, but all the organelles need to work together to ensure the animal's survival. Examples of organelles include the nucleus, ribosomes, and lysosomes. Some organelles are surrounded by one or more membranes, which ensure that their internal conditions are different to the external environment. Each organelle accommodates a variety of chemical reactions that are essential for the cell survival. If we look inside a membrane-bound organelle, such as a lysosome, then we can see high concentrations of enzymes and reactants. 
An enzyme is just a biological catalyst that speeds up the chemical reactions inside cells. Therefore, membranes allow organelles to function more efficiently. In fact, an animal cell containing membrane-bound organelles functions like a city. In Zoo York, many individual departments in separate offices cooperate to run the city. Some departments, like the recycling plant, break down the city's waste and transform it into useful products. Other departments, like the city council, make major decisions and manage important documents. Each individual department performs a unique role in its own location, and the city could not run without their cooperation. Like these departments, each organelle has a distinct function in animal cells. Of course, all the organelles need to work together to help the animal to survive. Let's start with the outermost layer of an animal cell. This is the cell membrane, which is a protective structure that separates the internal components of the cell from the external environment. The cell membrane is selectively permeable. In other words, it allows some substances to enter the cell but prevents others. The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer, which consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules. Phospholipid molecules are comprised of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. We'll discuss the phospholipid bilayer in our upcoming videos on the cell membrane. Let's check up on Sally and her classmates. Oh no, they've been stopped by police at the entrance barriers to the city of Zoo York. All visitors and luggage must be scanned to ensure that dangerous substances do not enter the city. Similarly, the cell membrane controls which substances may enter the cell's interior by being selectively permeable. Once we successfully pass through the cell membrane, we enter the interior of the animal cell. Inside the cell membrane lies the protoplasm, which consists of everything inside the cell membrane. Most metabolic reactions that are essential to the animal's survival occur in the protoplasm. These are just chemical reactions that occur in living organisms, such as respiration and protein synthesis. The protoplasm consists mostly of cytosol, the intracellular fluid that organelles float in. The cytosol is a gel-like fluid composed of water, salts, enzymes and organic molecules. Sally is standing in Times Oval a major intersection located right in the centre of Zoo York. There are giant entertainment complexes and electronic billboards displaying the latest news. The air is filled with a mixture of scents. There's so much to do, and Sally doesn't know where to start. Likewise, all the action inside an animal cell is found in the protoplasm, which lies inside the cell membrane. The cytosol, in which all the organelles float, resembles the city air, which fills every corner. Now, how do the organelles cooperate in such an orderly fashion? It's not like they're given orders, right? Well, let's see what the nucleus does. The nucleus is an organelle that stores the information needed to control and coordinate all cell activities including cell replication, growth, and repair. Right now, Sally is visiting the City Council Centre with her class. She's listening to an audio guide, which explains how the City Council documents and manages everything that goes on in Zoo York. Hold on a minute. The nucleus is just like a City Council. It holds information on everything that happens inside the cell and manages the individual organelles. During your studies, you'll need to remember the three main components of the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, and nucleolus. Let's begin with the first component, the nuclear membrane. A porous nuclear membrane surrounds the nucleus. It consists of an outer and inner membrane. 
The nuclear membrane is selectively permeable because the pores regulate the transport of substances between the nucleus and the external environment. The outer and inner membranes both consist of a phospholipid bilayer. Remember, a phospholipid bilayer is two layers of phospholipid molecules, which are composed of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. The City Council is a highly restricted premises because it's where many important documents are held. This means that all visitors, including Sally, need to pass a security check before they can enter. This includes facial recognition screening and a fingerprint scan. In fact, those two security measures sound like the nuclear membrane, which consists of two membranes that control the movement of substances to and from the nucleus. Once we move past the nuclear membrane, we arrive at the second major component of the nucleus. The nucleoplasm is a liquid area that contains the hereditary genetic information needed to run the animal cell. This information includes genes that are passed from one generation to the next. If you recall, genes contain the instructions for making an organism and keeping it alive. This information is stored in the form of multiple linear chromosomal DNA molecules, where DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA molecules are made of a long chain of nucleotide bases in the shape of a double helix and encode genes. Finally, the third main component of the nucleus is the nucleolus which is responsible for the assembly of ribosomes. Ribosomes are organelles involved in protein synthesis, which we'll discuss in our second video on animal cells. The nucleolus is comprised of ribonucleic acid and proteins. Remember, ribonucleic acid consists of a long chain of small molecules known as nucleotide bases, while proteins are long structured chains of amino acids. While following her audio guide, Sally is separated from the rest of her group. She wanders around trying to find her classmates. What's this? Sally's curiosity takes over and she pushes open the door. Wow! The room is packed with computers displaying footage from traffic cameras all around the city. The large computer in the centre is processing all this data and sending information to other departments. Wait a minute. The nucleoplasm resembles the inside of the city council, as it is where all the genetic information is stored. The nucleolus is like the city council's computer because it processes information to assemble ribosomes for the entire animal cell. Now, let's exit the nucleus and quickly return to the interior of animal cells. The protoplasm which consists of everything inside the cell, can be divided into two major sections, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Remember, the cytoplasm in a eukaryotic animal cell is different to the cytoplasm in a prokaryotic cell. The cytoplasm is the portion of the protoplasm that excludes the nucleus. Like the protoplasm, the cytoplasm mostly contains cytosol. OK, picture the entire city of Zoo York. Then remove the city council centre. This area is like the cytoplasm. It's everything that happens inside the cell, excluding the nucleus. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. Firstly, it is important that you remember the components of an animal cell, and secondly, you should know the function of each component. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer that separates the cell's contents from their surroundings and is selectively permeable, which means that it allows some substances to enter the cell but not others. The protoplasm consists of everything inside the cell membrane including the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The cytoplasm is the portion of the protoplasm that excludes the nucleus. 
The cytosol is the intracellular fluid composed of water, salts, enzymes, and organic molecules that organelles float in. An organelle is an organised, specialised structure that is found in a eukaryotic cell. Some organelles are covered by one or more membranes. The nucleus is an organelle which stores the information needed to control and coordinate all cell activities. There are three main components of the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, and nucleolus. The nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane, which consists of two phospholipid bilayers that regulate the transport of substances between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. The nucleoplasm is an area in the nucleus that contains all the hereditary genetic information of the animal in the form of multiple linear chromosomal DNA molecules. The nucleolus is a structure inside the nucleus composed of ribonucleic acid and proteins and is responsible for the assembly of ribosomes. To finish, this table summarises the key points of this lesson. Pause the video if you would like to read it for yourself. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on biology, check out our second video on animal cells. <laughs>